James Lewis and Andy Hirschberger. I'm here. Uh, the single comic book couldn't be here today. It's out drinking, trying to get a date. <laughs> trying to be a married comic book. Today we are going to be talking about the comic book industry in motion pictures. What's going on in film. So anybody who has been watching uh, the film industry lately has seen that there has been a plethora of comic related movies that have been coming out. Um, I think uh, coming up later this month, mm -hmm. the Avengers DVD comes out. Uh, it's already out. Is it already out? Yeah, okay. I watched it online the other day. And it, it to date is approaching a uh, billion dollars in revenue. So uh, today Andy and I are going to be discussing the industry a little bit. Okay. So um, what, what have you seen so far? Well, I did see the Avengers movie. What did you think about it? Didn't like it at all. Really? Terrible film. You're joking. Not at all. Why? Uh, the characters were written in a glib style. I think they sacrificed character development for quippy one-liners. The, uh, the balance was off. There were a lot of jokes that were common in the Marvel Universe that I think could have been disposed of for a more general audience. For example, S.H.I.E.L.D. was so inept that mm -hmm. one wondered how they got that flying battleship. They must have stolen it from the smarter villains and then not quite knew how to film it. Mm -hmm. There are moments that it's like, okay, I can understand you're being clever, but do you really have to have a pilot who is so dumb he doesn't know which way to direct the ship to find east or west? Mm -hmm. And those pulled me out of the film. And also, it's very difficult to have suspension of disbelief or to lose yourself in fear that a character will be hurt when, when within the first 15 minutes the characters beat each other up so badly and suffer no real consequences that it's almost like, okay, the CGI character is getting smacked around again. I know he can survive this. I just saw Thor crush his legs and slam him into the earth. Mm -hmm. Now he's in a propeller. Oh, yeah, no, that's not going to be a problem for him. So mm -hmm. I was very disappointed with the way that it failed in much the same way a lot of the superhero films tend to be, is they tend to be more clever than have a good through line. So, to be more so basically you're feeling right now that, that it wasn't real enough. No. That they, they didn't didn't bring the real elements in. If you're talking about injury to a character. Well, I think that it, it went for simple laughs and didn't go for stability. And I do not need or want too much reality in my superhero. I so agree. I, I mean, I think that it's it, there was a, a great story to be told, but I think that the way it was handled was um, was to my aesthetics because I'm definitely in the minority and I have nothing but my own opinion to go by and I, I do not dismiss anybody else's opinion. Mm -hmm. There were lots of things for different aesthetics to appreciate but for me particularly I felt that it just was a little too fanfic. It didn't really have a narrative build that went anywhere and the last part of the film is the problem a lot of movies have particularly like the Transformer films these CGI effects heavy films mm -hmm. where the entire film ends in a 20 square, foot, 20 square foot box they all stay in the same box as things destroy around them but they don't really move away from that box and of course the steel from the Phantom Menace where the trope of having there's a main ship but when you blow it up everything else goes down. Mm -hmm. That was a little disappointing to me. There was no sense of danger. Mm -hmm. Except for maybe some of the patrons who would occasionally get a scratch. Well, I've got to tell you, this that, that has to be one of the most unique 
uh, descriptions of the movie I've ever heard. But I do agree with you that you are definitely in the minority. Well, I would hope to, that you would. It especially would be a since it's a show. If yeah. you're like, I agree with uh, that a hundred percent. You know, when you got a film that's approaching, you know, a, almost a billion dollars in revenue. Well, here's a question you know. though: if uh, if a taco that made you vomit had sold a billion and made over a billion dollars in grosses, and everybody else loved it, would you then go, "Well, I must be wrong and need another one"? I'd have to try it again. Yeah. You would? Yes, I would. Well, I would have Especially to Especially if I liked the first one. Well, what happened? <laughs> well, that's a weird thing, because if it made you vomit the first time, you're like, oh, I love this so much. No, I just, went to, I just went to a bad store, that's all. I have to okay. go someplace else and well, buy I, another one. All right, well, maybe using the talk out with an analogy. If you saw, if you read a book and you despised it and you found out all your friends liked it, this might be better. I would want to know what they enjoyed about it. Well, true. And I, I, and I disagree with you. I absolutely loved this movie. I would hope you did. I thought it was, I thought it was total action mm -hmm. from beginning to end. Now I'm going to touch on some points that, that, that you brought up. The yeah. character development. Yeah. There didn't need to be any character development in that film. It was all done previously. It was done in the first two okay. Iron Man movies. It was done in the Thor movie. It was done in the Captain America movie. You didn't need to have any type of character development done. This was for pure fun. You know who the Hulk was. You know who mm -hmm. Bruce Banner was. You know what the Hulk is going to do when he turns green. Smash. That's all they wanted to see. Now, okay. in, in regards to, to S.H.I.E.L.D., okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to touch on that point, too. So you got the inept pilot, you say. Yeah. All right? Uh, well, what is S.H.I.E.L.D.? S.H.I.E.L.D. is an extension of a government entity. And I'm sorry. I've dealt with the government on many occasions, and that's exactly what you find. Well, the ineptness of certain individuals, not all of them, and I'm not downing anybody who works for the federal, state, or local government, but there are some people that are kind of questionable who work for that entity. So, mm -hmm. that could definitely see that, especially in a time where it's like, okay, well, you know, things are falling apart, and, you know, which way do we need to go, and you just, that, that lapse of common sense can definitely happen. But uh, I totally enjoyed the movie, and I think uh, Marvel slash Disney was very smart in their production, um, how they marketed it, how they led up to that, and um, you know, I really want to touch on on that a little bit too. Uh, granted, there was a big backstory, and they did provide that in a series of movies. So basically, to go into the Avengers, what you're telling to the average American who is in a recession is, you know, what you need to do: spend seventy dollars on different entertainment before you go and see this entertainment, so you can fully enjoy these characters. And I find that a little bit disappointing. I don't think a film needs to, and I think it's very easy to shorthand mm -hmm. in a backstory for this, needs to waste have that the kind footage. of footage. What do you mean waste the footage? Waste the footage for what purpose? Because you, you don't the need newbies. It. Even if they did if they didn't know Captain America's backstory, mm -hmm. you know, it go look it up online. Okay, okay, you've got the internet that's available for you. So what you, if you don't like the characters initially? So well, my, like, why would you want to do? I have plenty. Research? I like, have plenty oh. of friends. I have plenty of friends who aren't comic book fans uh -huh. who love to go and see and this movie. I've had plenty and of even if they, who are, they even if this movie. even if they only knew one or two characters. Oh, okay. well, we know the Hulk from you know the seventies. We want to see what he's mm -hmm. going to do with Iron Man, who we did go and see, but we didn't go see Thor, or Captain okay. America. So they don't know how everything interlocks and how everything goes together, um, but they seem like they weren't really interested in all of that. They knew enough to come in and enjoy this movie. Now, that means that those individuals don't understand the little subtle nuances of things that were being explained, you know, the Cosmic Cube, its relationship to the Marvel Universe, uh, the Avengers, and of course, you know, after the credits roll, yeah. the purple guy, Thanos. Well, I don't know Thanos. Who's Thanos? Uh, right. <laughs> Sorry, but every... I mean, these movies have been for for product, for mm -hmm. things people enjoy, and I'm not trying to be demeaning of that. There's a whole audience for these. I think they've done remarkably well, and I think the people behind them are incredibly intelligent. But as a viewer, speaking for myself, mm -hmm. I thought the film could have been much stronger. I felt the characters could have been better written. I felt they could have had a better build-up to everything. And I just felt the film really lacked that. And I'm also disappointed, not just in this movie, but in the tendency for the CGI to dictate the ending. When I was a kid, like in Raiders, you don't feel like you're trapped on a set. Mm -hmm. But in this movie, at the end, I feel like I'm trapped on a set. I so, so what would you have wanted to see differently? I, I would mean, like to you see, see them, them run through the city. 
not stay in the same in, stay in the same spot. Well, they were in the city. They were in the they in were the in the middle of spot. Manhattan. Yeah, in there. And they were all around fighting in, in I, different. I, you had I, Captain America fighting inside. You know, rescuing people in inside the building. You had yeah. uh, Thor and the Hulk in in another and location. They all came you had back Iron Man. Same spot. They're supposed to. They're a team. Yes, but teams during warfare don't all come back to the same location. They branch out. They and did. They were branched out before, and they were getting and they enough. were getting their butt kicked I, until they came back. Right. They let Captain America well, be the leader of the team that he's supposed right. to yeah, be, he pretty, and give them a strategic objective and what they okay. needed to do. Well. I agree that those are all things that happen, but from my perspective, it felt very claustrophobic. The extensions to these different areas felt cursory, and I felt that a lot of time was spent on threats that if you really gave, if you got lost for a second, mm -hmm. like you needed to look at your watch, or you had an itch, it would pull you out of the movie when you came back in trying to refigure why this should be frightening. Just a skull mask on a jet ski that flies through the air that occasionally can rough somebody up. And the characters would establish and throw out their skills early on, so there was no lemon surprise. Like what Black skills Widow. were thrown out? Black Widow okay. sits down and does her, oh, I'm in absolute distress, oh no, oh no. But really, she's on top of it the entire time. That's her skill. But then when we see Loki, it's kind of like, who's this goofball? He fell for that? But, so basically from my own personal aesthetic and my own viewpoint, and that's all I'm expressing here is that mm -hmm that I felt it was it, it was a diminishing returns where all the action, all the fights that should have been safe for the end happened in the beginning. And I know films like to be action oriented, but it, 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 I felt it took away from what could have been a slow build up to a very cathartic release. Instead it just was like a little series of tiny explosions mm -hmm. leading up to a, to a tiny pop. And I totally disagree. I felt that the previous movies were your slow build-up mm -hmm. and that they needed to start just like they did uh, with the beginning of this movie. And that's going, you know, right into battle and you know who these characters are. That's why you're here sitting in this theater to see this film. Um, I felt that the ending battle was, was very, very uh, climactic, big. I love the special effects. I love everything that was going on in there and set up for the future films and what's going on uh, with Marvel Studios and Disney in the future. So, if you were to rate it, what would, what would you rate the film? Well, what I consider a film that ended as ID4 and combined with the, <laughs> the Phantom Menace, I give it a Dalek. <laughs> exterminate! Exterminate! <laughs> well, I could not disagree with you more, and I give it that doesn't do anything. It person. doesn't do anything, but... It's bigger on the inside. It looks nice. <laughs> we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back and have more discussion about superhero characters and comic books in film. Hi, I'm Steve Jeppe, and I'd like to welcome you to Jeppe's Entertainment Museum. In 1974, I quit my job as a letter carrier at the U.S. Postal Service and opened a small comic book store in the basement of a TV repair shop. Little did I realize that from that humble beginning would grow this incredible pop culture collection you see here today. At the center of that collection is the comic character, the Brownies, Buster Brown, Mickey Mouse, the Lone Ranger, Superman, Barbie. These are just some of the characters who've made a tremendous impact on our individual childhoods distract us. They've brought us relief in times of trouble, like the Great Depression and World War II. Today, they help us escape the pressure and stress of our ordinary, everyday lives. But there's more to it than that. These characters have played a large and largely unrecognized role in our education. Batman comic books helped me to learn to read when I was five years old. Thanks, big guy. That experience fostered a lifelong love of reading. I had dreamed of creating this museum for almost 30 years, but where to build it? When I toured Camden Station for the first time in 2003, I realized I had finally found the home these characters so richly deserved. Abraham Lincoln passed through this building four times. When Babe Ruth left his boyhood home of Baltimore to play for the Boston Red Sox, he took a train from this very station. Today, the first floor houses sports legends at Camden Yards, a museum which chronicles the history of Maryland sports. If there is a more appropriate place to display the history of pop culture in America, I can't think of it.
we're back. Yes, we're back, and we were just sitting here and talking, and we both have a strong love for comic-to-screen uh, character uh, films, so we both wanted to just share with you one of our favorites, or each of our favorite, and we figured it would be nice to wrap everything up with a bit of pleasantry, talk about one of our favorites when it comes to characters from the comic pages going to the big screen, so... You were just telling me about your favorite comic to screen. I, I'm, I'm going to have to go with, right now, mm -hmm. um, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. In the first or second one? In the first movie, the very first one. Um, I, was, I was pleasantly surprised. I've, I've not been a big you know, Robert Downey Jr. fan. No. But um, I felt he really did a great job in creating a persona for this particular character, uh, for Tony Stark. Now, even though, really, when you break him down in the comic book, he's, he's kind of a little more like uh, uh, Bruce Wayne than he is the way that, that uh, uh, Downey portrays him. But I yeah. think it's a fun character, you know, the, the aloof, you know, playboy who's got more money than he knows what to do with, um, egotistical, you know, just, uh, I think it's a great character. It's just a great character, and the movie was fun, regardless of whether you were a comic book fan. And I, and you know, I discussed this with, yeah, you know, my my aunt, uh, you know, who's seventy years old, and she loved the movie just because it was a fun movie, and she didn't need to know that there was a comic book or anything. It was just a great character, uh, you know, brought from the pages of a comic book to life. And he is actually an exceptional actor, and from from my personal perspective. I wish that somebody of his caliber mm -hmm. would have played Batman in the Nolan pictures to give mm -hmm. it a little more brevity. Mm -hmm. Or I would say not even brevity because the pathos is still there. More pathos mm -hmm. in a sense because of his history he brings to it. But also because of uh, his finesse and his skill. He's more of a nuanced actor than mm -hmm. Bale is. But that's my opinion. So what's your favorite film? My favorite is Buster Crab as Flash Gordon and the adaptation of Alex Raymond's Flash Gordon. I love that movie serial. It is exceptional to me on so many levels to watch an early <laughs> 30s film. And the special effects are chintzy, but they hold up really well. And you get wrapped up into this It tale. was fun. It was, it, 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 it's great. It's like watching like the precursor to Star Wars. It's got the scroll starting it up. Mm -hmm. It's got the chapter. It's got the actor who's not as wooden as they'd like you to believe. Uh -huh. And people in like misfitting suits and robots that would never look like that today. <laughs> like boilers just walking around with stiff arms. And it's such a joy to sit through. And there's three series. And just, I love them so much. There's something to be said about nostalgia. It, it, it really well, it is. Well, it wasn't nostalgia for but, me. But, I mean, looking back and looking at, you know, older productions, you know, of course you don't want to compare them to the stuff that's being done today. So th that's what I mean when I say nostalgia. Um, they're well, just it's fun movies, fun series to watch. Um, and, yeah, it, it was good. But don't, don't think I'm mirrored in the past that I only need this stuff. I do think that Takashi Miike is soon going to release RoboCop, his remake of it. I'm expecting very good things from that, even though it didn't really come from the comic. I, I it came have, the land of awesome. I have seen uh, some of the still production photos of that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. The question, uh, mark, the question mark is there. I would like to be pleasantly surprised, but I don't know. I'm just waiting for Lars Van Trier's superhero movie. No happy endings. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it'd just be the beginning story of Batman and then end. So anyways, I was uh, very interested in talking about the Christopher Reeve at some point, the Superman, because I love that film. Up, up, up! It's the R2-D2 phone. Got a call coming in. Hello, R2. What? Uh-oh. Looks like we got a video of Patrick Michael Strange. Take it away, R2! Yeah. Yeah. Hi, zombie ah. Oh my, <laughs> you must have gotten stuck in balloon land, huh? Ah. Yes? Zombie woman is stuck in balloon land, and pincushion man tried to pop me! Oh god! He turned me into balloon and then no! <laughs> Not zombie wompy! No, oh, you can't do that. Not too zombie wompy, but it looks like you've grown some appendages uh -huh. here. Won't they come off? 
They won't come off. Can you, could you do something? Something, off? yeah, something needs to be done about that. Ah. Let's see. Looks like you've been at a burlesque party or a ten-year-old clown party. You've got to do something like that. You could put on a whole act like that, Zombie Wombie. Something to think about. Okay. Okay. Now, <laughs> this might hurt just a little bit, okay? okay. But just brace yourself. I, I can do it. Okay. Yeah. I know you can. Okay. I don't have my hypno lollies, so I can't. <laughs> I know, I know, it's so sad. Like, I, I can't hypnotize you or else it would be totally painless. But with this, you'll get a little pain. Just a little pain. Okay? okay? Mm. All right. Let's see. <laughs> I feel like pincushion man. I take no pleasure in this. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it just hurts a little, right? <laughs> I might have some dementia juice or something that you could drink. Candy? Yeah. Candy? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. You'd like that, right? Oh, yeah. That'd be why I like candy. Yeah. yeah. Dementia oh. juice. Drink oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder what's going to happen. Oh, oh, oh. oh zombie woman feel like Papa. Yeah. Like like yeah. 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 I think you've had enough. <laughs> this should make things no, much that, better that now. Just yeah. yeah. <laughs> feel oh, good. Yeah. Feeling good. Okay. Feeling great. Ooh. All right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Kind of take the edge off. Yeah. Mm. You don't need that. <laughs> You've been to the plastic surgeon in Balloon Land, I can see. <laughs> Must have liked that just a bit, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> you like that zombie wombi? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get it on. Okay. All right now. Yeah. <laughs> zombie, zombie. <laughs> Back it up. Back it up. Woo, need to put brake lights on that thing. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it looks like we have to uh, wrap it up for this exciting episode of and Two Guys in a Comic Book, which is now more like Four Guys in a Comic Book. And we're going to end on a happy <laughs> we'll keep you posted. So it looks like we're happy to leave you with two recommendations. Iron Man, Flash Gordon. Uh, whichever path you go, you'll probably be able to decide which one of our aesthetic appreciations you more than favor. But either way, but either way you go, human, his. If you're a robot, <laughs> mine. But either way you go, you'll have a happy ending, which is what we're doing for the show right now, right. giving you a happy ending. Merry so. seasons. <laughs> so James Lewis. Andy Hirschberger. Two guys in a comic book. Tune in next time and we will have more exciting topics discussing uh, comic books and things that are happening comic book related. Just in case you didn't know, all the items featured today in Two Guys in a Comic Book are available you at the... You would make a good Dalek. At the You Would Make a Good Dalek store in England, but in the United States you can come to Jeppy's Comic World, the Jeppy's Entertainment Museum, and acquire delightful objects like this. Right here in Baltimore, Maryland, Camden Yards. Camden Yards, Camden Station, second floor. That crazy cat is one crazy cat. He is a crazy cat. He's a crazy cat. He's not Italian, right? And he's not gender no, 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 specific, no, but he is crazy. He's actually Polish. Polish. No, I'm kidding. I don't know what gender. <laughs> he's a cat. He's a stray. Or she is a stray. We don't know. Well, I've had a great time on these early segments, thing, but we've, we have one more special thing you've brought. That's right. I wanted to continue with Crazy Cat because I love it so much. And the other thing I love so much is a circus. I am a bit of a traditionalist. When the circus comes to town, I'm always there. And nothing is more fun to me than cartoons that either feature horrific monsters or circuses. And which one do you have for us? I have At the Circus. Crazy Cat At the Circus. And this is by Cartoons on Film. Cartoons on Film at AOL.com. Let's have a look.
So Andy, thank you. For